It's all it's right, all right to, be to be just a little bit crazy. Being, being creative, creative is being a little bit crazy in just, just the right vibration. vibration. With, that With that in mind, you should understand, should understand God's, God's completely God's insane. insane. <laughs>
We, the group that speaks to you, are intending to fill our own resume with some interesting experiences. When we first began speaking in 1988, our collective consisted of 50 to 75 entities, some physical, some non-physical, all Pleiadian. Our numbers have been growing and our collective now consists of well over 100 entities from many different systems. We can now be called Pleiadians Plus. There are those in our reality who do not believe that we can accomplish what we have set out to do with you. They feel that we are taking too many chances and too many risks, yet they are sitting on the edges of their seats to see what will happen. We are here to assist, to teach, and to evolve as we go through this process together. We give our version of things only to bring you into higher consciousness. We do not wish to say that this version and only this version is how it is. This whole teaching is designed with a great purpose in mind and the stories that we tell you are set up to take you to a higher plane of consciousness. That is our intention. We wish to throw out ideas for your consideration. We wish to encourage you not to get stuck on any one idea and also to embrace what you are hesitant about or are fearful of. Realize that when you face the so-called dark portions or shadow portions of yourself, you are creating an opportunity of liberation for all concerned. This comes back to the first and final tenet, thought creates. No matter what situation you find yourself in, it is the power of your thoughts that got you there. It is also the impeccable belief that thought creates that will transform your experience and the planetary existence. You yourself chose to be here. You are on assignment to bring memory forward and to bring the value of human existence back to the forefront of creation. You are needed. You have been in training for this assignment for lifetimes and you did not come unprepared. All that you need to know now is inside of you and it is your task to remember your training. This is not a lifetime when you are going to be taught new information. As we said before, this is the lifetime when you are going to remember what you already know and we are just here to remind you of it. That is part of our assignment. Humanity is an experiment. Humanity has been designed as has just about everything else that exists within creation. Prime Creator began experimenting with creation a long time ago in this universe for the purpose of greater self-exploration, self-gratification, and self-expression. Prime Creator brought energies and essences of life, extensions of itself, into this universe and endowed those extensions with the gifts that it had. Prime Creator said to these extensions of itself, go out and create and bring all things back to me. This was quite a simple assignment, was it not? These extensions of Prime Creator, which we will call Creator Gods, went out and began to experiment with Prime Creator's energy as it existed within themselves. They began to create their own hierarchy, which in turn created other hierarchies. Each succeeding hierarchy created another hierarchy to endow it with its own essence and to assist in the development of this universe. Eventually, in one of the galactic systems, a plan came together to design Earth as an intergalactic exchange center of information. It was an incredible plan. Earth was a beautiful place, located on the fringes of one of the galactic systems and easily reached from other galaxies. It was close to many way portals, the highways that exist for energies to travel throughout space. Some of the creator gods were master geneticists. The master geneticists designed various species, some human, some animal, by playing with the varieties of DNA 
that the sentient civilizations contributed to make Earth into this exchange center of information, this light center, this living library. The original planners of Earth were members of the family of light, beings who worked for and were associated with an aspect of consciousness called light. Light is information. The family of light created the information center they had conceived of. They designed a place where galaxies would contribute their information and where all would be able to participate and share their specific knowledge. Earth was to be a cosmic library, a place of incredible beauty that experimented with how information could be stored through frequencies and through the genetic process. The project of the living library on Earth was eventually fought over. It looked enticing enough to be owned by some. During Earth's early history, there were wars in space for ownership of this planet. Skirmishes took place, and Earth became a place of duality. Certain creator gods who had the right to do whatever they wanted, because Earth is a free will zone, came in and took over. When the skirmish occurred, a certain group of entities fought in space and won the territory of Earth. These new owners did not want the native Earth species, the humans, to be informed of what took place. Uninformed, the species would be easier to control. That is why light is information and darkness is lack of information. These entities beat out light and Earth became their territory. These new owners who came here 300,000 years ago are the magnificent beings spoken of in your Bible, in the Babylonian and Sumerian tablets, and in texts all over the world. They came to Earth and rearranged the native human species. They rearranged your DNA in order to have you broadcast within a certain limited frequency band whose frequency could feed them and keep them in power. The original human was a magnificent being whose 12 strands of DNA were contributed by a variety of sentient civilizations. When the new owners came in, they worked in their laboratories and created versions of humans with a different DNA, the two-stranded double helix DNA. The original DNA pattern was left within the human cells, yet it was not functional. It was split apart, unplugged. Within human cells are light-encoded filaments, fine gossamer threads of energy that carry information. When these gossamer threads are working together like a cable, the way fiber optics works, they form the helix of your DNA. When you were rearranged, you were left with the double helix. Anything that was unnecessary for survival and that would keep you informed was unplugged, leaving you with only a double helix that would lock you into controllable, operable frequencies. We, as Pleiadians, came back through time into what would perhaps be called our past in the vestige of representatives of light. We came back in order to share a frequency with you, a frequency that each one of you has agreed to carry on this planet in order to change the DNA of the rearranged human race. The plan to change the frequency modulation affecting the human species entails the rebundling of your DNA and of the light encoded filaments. Earth is assisting, in its own way, the evolution of the universe. It is where the plan begins to blossom, and what happens on Earth is going to affect many, many worlds. Your DNA will evolve from two helixes to twelve helixes. These twelve helixes correspond to energy centers or chakras inside and outside of your body. This process is an incredible evolutionary leap for one to be involved in and it is going to take place on an accelerated path for the next twenty years. There are those who have already received a realignment of the 12 strands of DNA, the 12 helixes. 
these 12 spiral strands of DNA interact with one another in the body and outside of the body. The connection of the 12 strands means that the 12 energy or information centers can begin to function and send information back and forth to one another. When human DNA begins to rebundle as a 12-stranded helix system and this information is acted upon, there will be incredible power. Individuals, simply by coming together and jointly intending what they want, jointly becoming a telepathic receptacle for energies from all over the cosmos, will change the face of the universe. There will be a merging of identities a merging of cultures, an infusion of many new world orders, and there will be much chaos and confusion. As members of the family of light, you can simply observe this, knowing that chaos and confusion must come to break down the system so that it can be rebuilt with light. As members of the family of light, you can understand that there is an evolutionary process taking place and that those who can handle the changing frequencies by all means will evolve. There are many misconceptions about the idea of Godhood. The universes are full of intelligent beings who have, over time, evolved and developed all sorts of capabilities and functions to serve their needs to express themselves creatively. The importance behind existence and consciousness is creativity, and creativity takes many forms. Eons ago, Earth was but a thought in the mind of great beings who had set before themselves the task of creating new forms of existence. Many of these beings affected the creation of this universe, and you have termed them God. In actuality, they were extraterrestrial, light-bearing energies far removed from Prime Creator. We rarely use the term God with a big G. If we were to use that term, we would be referring to the entity we know as Prime Creator. Prime Creator, in its own personal implosion through love, endowed all things with consciousness. All things are Prime Creator on Prime Creator's journey. The evolution of consciousness and the ability to house information is what allows one to come into the proximity of Prime Creator. Many people on Earth have felt that they have merged with God. They may have merged with a portion of Prime Creator that best suited their vibration at the time. The total vibration of Prime Creator would destroy the physical vehicle in an instant because it cannot house that much information. Those that represent God to you are but a minute portion of Prime Creator. The Creator Gods who have been ruling this planet have the ability to become physical, though mostly they exist in other dimensions. They keep Earth in a certain vibrational frequency while they create emotional trauma to nourish themselves. There are some beings who honor life before everything else. And there are also beings who do not honor life and do not understand their connection to it. The Creator Gods are space beings who have their own home in space. They are also evolving. Before the takeover, about 300,000 years ago, many of the original team worked here to bring information and create this vast information center that was to be used to connect many galactic systems. Then there was a great war among the Creator Gods and the space beings whose stories are in the ancient manuscripts of this planet won the fight. They came here because they wanted this place for many of their own reasons. In Prime Creator's universe here, all things are allowed. Because all things are allowed, many lessons are learned. Who are these beings who came in 
and rent asunder the original plans for Earth? Who are these space beings we sometimes refer to as the dark t-shirts? These space beings are part human and part reptilian. We call them the Lizzies because we like to make things a little less emotional and a little humorous so that you don't take them so seriously and get so upset. We are not here to frighten you. We are here to inform you. Some creator gods created life just to have it take care of them or meet their needs. They have fed off your emotions. One of the big secrets that has been kept from you as a species is the richness and wealth that accompanies emotion. You have been steered away from exploring emotion because through emotion you can figure things out. Your emotions connect you with the spiritual body. The spiritual body, of course, is non-physical, existing on the multidimensional sphere. Within the Lizzie population, there are those who are benevolent and those who are malevolent. Why are we telling you all this? Why do you need to know it? You need to know it because the Lizzie reality is re-entering and merging with your dimension. You must make peace with them and merge with them to create an implosion of the collection of your soul. In this way, you can come back to Prime Creator. There have been many other Creator Gods, only some of which have had human form. Presently, your greatest state of unrest or discomfort comes from beings of a reptilian type of existence because they seem the most foreign to you. It has been our intention to expand your ideas of who your gods are because those gods will be returning to Earth. That is why the planet is going through such great turmoil. As you learn to hold the frequencies coming from the creative cosmic rays, you will be prepared to meet these gods. You must understand how to discern the extraterrestrial energies. This is a free will universe, so all forms of life are allowed here. If an energy attempts to frighten you, manipulate you, or control you, it is not an energy that would be in your highest interest to work with. You have a choice of who you work with. You are living in a most important time when energy is coming alive. The gods are here. You are these gods. As you awaken to your history, you will begin to open your ancient eyes. These are the eyes of Horus, which see not through the eyes of a human being, but from the point of view of a god. They see the connectedness and purpose of all things. For the ancient eyes are able to see into many realities and to connect the whole picture, the whole history. When you open the ancient eyes within yourself, you will not only be able to connect with your own whole personal history, you will be able to connect with the planetary history, the galactic history, and the universal history. Then, indeed, you will find out who your gods are. Once upon a time, there were beings who wanted to create something. In order to do this, they needed to go in and very subtly change a part of creation. These beings worked for, were associated with, and carefully guarded an aspect of consciousness called light. At different times, these guardians of light met and worked together and crossed paths in the different realms of reality. They planned, they shared blueprints, and they designed a time when their plan would go into effect. These beings had a plan to prepare for the time when that light would fit. These beings are you, and that time is now. The time has been carefully orchestrated, and each of you knows in the deepest portions of your being that you have come here for a purpose. The purpose, of course, is for each individual to become sovereign and for the planet to unite. Not everyone is going to make the shift. 
Everyone is not in the vibration that wants to work in harmony at this time. There are those on earth who will feel as if they are in states of ecstasy when they find what they think is a new authority, a higher authority, a new paradigm, animal gods, or whatever. So the family of light, as it has infiltrated and penetrated this planet, is going to create its own planetary sphere, its own earth. Over the next number of years, those who come from the skies may not be members of the family of light. They will be the mirror of those upon the planet. We have said to you that your lesson is authority, to become your own authority, and to stop giving over your decision-making process to governmental people or parents or teachers or gods. It is time for the people of Earth to become sovereign. You are beginning to feel what may be coming. It is an awesome task to carry light. Once you put it in your body, there is no stopping it. There is no saying, I quit the light team. I won't be recognized as a member of the family of light. Some of you may want to do this sometimes, but once light is there, that is it. Many of you who have studied and used your own discernment will be shocked and appalled at the foolishness and ideological worship that the rest of the human race will express towards certain beings from space who pass themselves off as your creators even though they do not have bodies that look like yours. They will be able to do many things and will share many technologies. They will perhaps cure certain diseases that they helped create in the first place by teaching germ warfare to your planetary scientists. Oh dear humans, you are in for such an adventure, and only you can carry this adventure out. When you begin to live all that we teach you, to trust identity, to trust synchronicity, to trust being a part of a plan, then you will find that even in the midst of great calamity and incredible odds, you will be able to defy the laws of humanity. All of this is to be felt. Allow your brain cells to click into being without your rational conscious mind wanting to define things down to the most minute detail. This experience involves raising a feeling inside yourself and then one day, at one moment, in one afternoon, having an overwhelming sense of knowing, having a composition of a thousand pages long come alive in five seconds of divine ecstasy. You hold the history of the universe within your physical body. What is occurring upon the planet now is the literal mutation of your physical body, for you are allowing it to be evolved to a point where it will be a computer that can house this information. Before you came into the body, all of you committed to designing events that would fire your codings or blueprints that would activate your memories. Then you came into the body and you forgot all of you have had your blueprints and coatings fired to some extent because you understand that there is a divine purpose or divine plan that you are a part of. The firing of the coatings and the realization of your identity are going to become phenomenally intense. The reason for this is the evolving DNA. When you have 12 helixes of DNA in place, those helixes will begin to plug into the 12 chakra system. The 12 chakras are vortex centers loaded with information that you must be able to translate. You are evolving yourself even when you are not on the planet and you are perhaps more involved with other identities of yourself. You have to become super beings in whatever reality you enter because as members of the family of light, the branch of renegades, this is your forte. You purposely came to this planet to give yourself such a challenge so that you could be defiant, not in a way that would give you problems or create disharmony, 
but in a way that would create harmonic defiance. Through your harmony, you are defiant toward the old vibrational frequency. The present evolutionary system, designed by the Creator Gods to step you up a number of dimensions or frequencies, is based upon the evolution of the twelve helixes that correspond to the twelve chakra centers, seven within your body and five outside your body. This is simply the way the system plugs in. Some people will be functioning with the twelve helixes within a short period of time, while others around the planet will not receive this shift until later in the decade. This is simply because each individual is coded to be given the frequency when they are capable of integrating it. Many are already having a difficult time integrating the changes at this early stage of the plan. A large majority of the humans on Earth have convinced themselves that there is only one reality and there can be no other. This could be the downfall of the human race. As the helixes come into full force in a person, there is an awakening of the person's inner knowledge, knowledge that goes beyond what the person has been taught. This inner knowledge is knowledge of self, knowledge that says there is much more than this physical world. Believe it, know it, understand it. There are multitudes of chakra centers, and there are multitudes of potential helixes that can form. Right now, the common denominator with respect to the number of helixes and chakras that the consciousness of humanity can handle without destroying itself is 12. So we are dealing right now with an involvement of 12 helixes to plug into the 12 chakras. As mentioned before, seven chakras in the body and five chakras outside the body. The seven chakras in the body are not too difficult to work with because if you allow yourself to feel, you can physically touch and locate all of them. The first three are the chakras of survival, sexuality, and perceptual feeling. The fourth chakra is the heart center of compassion and connectedness to all things. The fifth is the throat chakra, which relates to speaking. The sixth is the third eye, the vision. The seventh is the crown chakra, which opens to the knowing that one's identity goes beyond the physical form. When you get to the five outside of the body, you must begin to find new ways to figure out what is going on with something that you don't even know for sure is real. The eighth chakra is within your realm of activity. It hovers 12 inches or more above your head. Most people keep the eighth chakra center close to their physical body. The ninth chakra is close as well, within a few feet of the body. Once nine helixes are formed, this chakra will move out into the atmosphere of Earth to become more of an Earth chakra connecting into the grid work. It is a link. The tenth, eleventh, and twelfth chakras are much further out. The tenth chakra once it is in line and plugged in, will be in your solar system. The 11th chakra will move out into your galactic system, and the 12th will be located and anchored someplace in this universe. You will receive information from these personal centers, for they are collective centers as well, just as your other personal chakra centers are collective centers. As you learn to translate the chakra experiences, you will discover that life is not the same anymore. As you explore your current body, identity, and lifetime, do it quickly. You do not have years to study them. As the information in your DNA is retooled and replugged in, you will be able to feel how the events from this life connect and blossom and have a thread of purpose with many different places that you have lived and many different identities that you have occupied. 
You are not alone. You could not do this alone. Even when we say to you that you are the standard bearer of your soul, there are other aspects of yourself that have figured the story out and are coming back into your time period to create this vortex of energy that is going to affect all realities. We cannot emphasize enough the importance of these times and the excitement and joy of what they hold as long as you are willing to change. DNA carries the coding for this genetic material and its helixes are made up of light encoded filaments, tiny gossamer threads that carry information the way fiber optic systems do. The pillar of light that you use to activate yourself and to bring information into your body is also composed of light encoded filaments. These light encoded filaments carry a vast amount of data and information and your body is filled with them. When bundled together and placed in a certain alignment, the light encoded filaments work together and release information that makes sense of the history they carry. The task you have before you is to consciously command, intend, and will the evolvement of your DNA. Commanding and willing and asking for this is not easy, for you must move through many identities. From the historical perspective of your multidimensional existence, or essence, or soul, you have been all kinds of characters, and some of these experiences have been painful. They have been challenging and difficult. The light encoded filaments are a tool of light, a part of light, and an expression of light. These light encoded filaments exist as millions of fine thread-like fibers inside your cells, while counterpart light encoded filaments exist outside of your body. The light encoded filaments carry the language of light geometry, which carries the stories of who you are. These light encoded filaments were not previously able to come onto the planet because there was a pollution created by the dark team that kept them out. The information in the filaments was left inside of you, yet there was no logical way to make sense of it. So, in the present time, how do you find the information? The information is going to reveal itself to you. That is the process. You don't have to go looking for it because this revelation is your heritage and who you are. As the DNA begins to form new strands, these new strands will travel along a nervous system in the body that is being developed at this time and memories will come flooding into your consciousness. You must work to develop this nervous system, to pull light into your body, to oxygenate your system, to learn how to move through energy accelerations, and to call more ideas and experiences into your body. As this process begins to grow and nurture itself in your body, simply observe it, for you will want to know how to access it. Getting stuck in your dramas is like reading one of your books over and over again and not letting all of the information in other books come together. There is more. There is a whole story. DNA holds the code. It holds the blueprint of identity, the plan for existence, the history of the universe, and the history of life in this particular locale and it is stored within the cells of humans. The original DNA of the stewards of this planet, the human occupants, had a genetic blueprint that was based on the number 12. The 12 strands of genetic material are therefore connected to many other representatives or informational sources that also number 12. Remember, Reality mirrors reality. The 12 strands of information hooked the human occupant up 
with corresponding information centers in and out of the body. We call Earth the Living Library because you all have an image of what a library is. It is a place where information is stored and available. We use this analogy because we intend to evoke the image that everywhere you go, you are in a library. You just haven't figured out yet how to translate the information or recognize where it is in the library. Humans were designed to be the key to access this information in the living library. Right now, 12 is the system that connects. And if you look around, you will see it everywhere. It was a symbolic insertion for a reason, so that you would someday figure out that it connects you to something somewhere else. It is not your natural rhythm, but it is a group agreement to use the energy of 12 in many different systems of reality. It is a coded formula. Many things that make no sense to the logical mind make a tremendous amount of sense to the light encoded filaments and to the body as it is becoming more sensitive. There was a reason to build the libraries in the first place, for the pulsation of tyranny was beating at the time. There was concern on the part of certain energies, the keepers of time, that information might get into the wrong hands. So, very playfully, the libraries were designed in many different modes. The other libraries or worlds are not at all like your world. The task for the keepers of time was to engineer a project through which consciousness could evolve, have information, and be utilized to access information. Originally, the role of the human occupant as the way shower to the library was one of great honor. Without the human occupant, one could not access the library and the more tuned in the human occupant was, the more one could access the library. The human occupant had a certain pride in being loose enough and connected enough to find the data in all things. You are going to discover someday that sex is part of the process. When you own your own sexuality, you will see the opportunities you have to express it and you will decide whether you want to express it in those ways or not. Sexuality has been used to spark the library card. There is something very dangerous in this, however, because it has been misused. That is why it is very important to own your sexuality and be very certain whom you share it with. We don't want any of you to be in a position to be bought or enticed. You are advised to look and see if you experience others as being honest and having integrity or whether they are flattering you. You are becoming stewards for power. You benefit by participating in the event of life. By simply being in physicality, you are endowed with experiences and characteristics that you cannot gather anywhere else. To be part of physicality on Earth at this particular time and during the last 200,000 to 300,000 years is a very potent event indeed because it means that you have come into a place where darkness has been reigning. The nature of existence on Earth has been a struggle between light and darkness for many eons. Some would call it a struggle between good and bad or upliftment and evil. We will simply say that it is an event and place where certain laws and rules exist and that Earth is certainly not the only place in existence that deals with these kinds of challenges. You are in the decade that we have labeled the unnamed decade, the 1990s. It is during this time that all the great events are going to begin to occur upon Earth. Many events have already been occurring, 
but they have been sequestered away in little compartmentalizations of officialdom. Those of you who are ancients, who are the masters awakening as you awaken, we want you to be able to see out of the ancient eyes and to awaken something that you know, something that you remember, something that is deep inside. You are going to need to trust yourself and rely upon yourself. You need to be able to see, to understand what you are seeing, and to translate the grander vision for others. It is up to you, and only you, to undo the locks and allow yourselves to go forward. We have spoken about your beliefs and the importance of thought. We emphasize over and over again that you are a result of thought, that thought is, and that this is the essence of understanding, manipulating, and working within your world. This is the age of the multidimensional self, the self who can move with awareness in many different realities, the self who can eventually bilocate and disappear, the self who can move into fourth dimensional consciousness, the perceiver, not the thinker. Intuition is the avenue that you are now being guided to cultivate to bring about a marriage of consciousness. It is the marriage of the male aspect, which is logical, with the female aspect, which is feeling. It involves bringing them together to become one. You will begin to discover aspects of yourself that exist non-physically, or parts of self that exist as beings working in space who are truly space creatures. The soul is going to wake up. It will know every aspect of itself and every aspect of the soul self will know all of itself at once. Have you ever thought that there are portions of yourself that are in the dark that don't know how to find the light except through you? They want the light as well. They want solutions and answers. What you may feel is not necessarily the intent of the dark force, but the emotional makeup of the dark force, the fear that vibrates out of lack of information. Portions of yourself that are uninformed are going to come to you to be informed. How do you inform them? You shed light, you share light, you say, I intend for all of my other selves to come along on this journey and for them to get light as well. A characteristic that members of the family of light have in common with one another is their participation in many versions of sentient or composite reality. Many of the forms that you have chosen to incarnate with would look very foreign and be very frightening to you. Yet this is how you have evolved your soul. You do not incarnate in only one species. You are travelers. As members of the family of light, you know the inside scoop. You come as ambassadors to make realities merge and become more informed within themselves so that everyone involved can release fear and become uninhibited. Part of your job is to meet these other selves, to merge with them, and to feel what this is like. As you grow and come to these higher realms of recognition, you will break through what feels like cement blocks, layers of yourself that have held you down. Think of the frequency that has limited the human experiment as a radio station. The human experiment has had one radio station on for 300,000 years. Same old tunes. The human experiment was unable to turn the dial and hear a different band, so the same frequency was broadcast. This created a quarantine, a sealing off of this planet. The creative cosmic rays sent by Prime Creator and the original planners pierce through this frequency shield. They bombard Earth. However, they must have someone to receive them. 
Without a receptacle, these creative cosmic rays would create chaos and confusion. You, as members of the family of light, come into this system to receive these rays of knowledge. You then disseminate the knowledge, the new lifestyle, and the new frequency to the rest of the population to alter the entire planet. As members of the family of light, you are here to anchor frequency and allow the mutation process to happen inside of your bodies so that you can make it available to the planet. You live this process, then you broadcast it to the planet. The ultimate tyranny in a society is not control by martial law. It is control by the psychological manipulation of consciousness through which reality is defined so that those who exist within it do not even realize that they are in prison. They do not even realize that there is something outside of where they exist. We represent what is outside of what you have been taught exists. It is where you sometimes venture and where we want you to dwell. It is outside of where society has told you you can live. You have been deprived of knowledge by frequency control. Frequency control limits the number of stations you can tune into. As members of the family of light, you must anchor new frequencies through static chaos and bring them into the physical realm. As you learn about your own personal history and discover patterns of ineffectual behavior that you must break and change, the planet pulses through its own patterns of behavior. You are about to repeat history as a planet in a most dramatic way. You have come to alter and remove the frequency of limitation and to bring in the frequency of information. When you are informed, you move beyond the need to be in fear. When you feel uninformed and out of control, you do not understand the bigger picture. Each of you came to awaken something inside yourself, inside the coding of your being, the DNA, and you are responding to it. This is why you are on a search in all directions of your life. As systems busters, and potential keepers of frequency, you will obviously go into the areas where your specialties are most needed. Many of the beings who have incarnated as members of the family of light came to the United States because this is the land where you can make the most progress. This also happens to be a land where denial is pervasive. You believe that you live in the land of the free and the home of the brave, yet you live in the most controlled experimental society on the planet. The tyranny that has been set up here is rather interesting because it is a tyranny without walls. As a country and a collective consciousness, the United States still has not reached an awareness that something is not right. Because everyone is so frightened of giving up the system in the United States, they are going to be forced to give it up. The system is corrupt, it does not work, it does not honor life, and it does not honor Earth. Consciousness must change. This is part of the divine plan, and this opportunity and setup are not going to be missed. In the next few years, a connectedness and communal cooperation will begin to run through this country so that you will stop separating yourselves with respect to political ideology. That separation was designed. Much of the political maneuvering going on, particularly in the United States, is purposely designed to separate you. Look at the New Age. Do you see how the New Age is separated? All kinds of things are said to keep you from discovering what you have in common. When people discover this, they will begin to get angry. A new pride and a new sense of integrity will come about because this is what is designed for the times. Modern technology is one of the biggest weapons of frequency control. 
you have been sold devices for entertainment and convenience, and they are all involved with frequency control. We recommend strongly that you get rid of your television sets. They are the primary tool used to manipulate your consciousness on a day-to-day -day basis. This experiment is so finely tuned that you respond subliminally to disease via the television. Television also promotes inactivity and a sedentary, obese life. Look around you. Wake up, humans. People who need to watch television are not tapping into the wealth of information within their minds and immediately accessible all around them. As a matter of fact, if you really want to evolve, do not read your newspapers, do not listen to the radio, and do not watch television. If you are able to be media-free for periods of time, and you disengage yourself from the frequency of chaos and anxiety and stress and hustle-bustle and temptations of all kinds that you don't need, you begin to get clear. You begin to listen to what is going on inside of yourself and to live of the world and not necessarily be lost in it. You become clear. We cannot emphasize this enough. The educational system is another area where you are controlled. Most of what you are taught is malarkey. You work hard, take loans out, and pay money to learn something that is antiquated before you even set foot in the door, particularly in the realms of scientific, mathematical, psychological, and medical exploration. We are asking humans to come into full function as members of the family of light by imaging and energizing the pillar of light and pulling it inside the body. Command it. Make it your intention every day to operate with a cordon of light, for light frequency connects you and fills you with protection and information. Feel it move into the base of your spine, down your body, and into the earth, as well as coming out of your solar plexus area like a fountain and forming a golden shield of light around you. As you use the solar plexus area to determine what is going on, you will learn discernment through feeling. Since you are a frequency-controlled society, the ability of humanity to create technologies has been limited. In a less controlled society that has greater outreach or travel capabilities through space and greater interchange between systems, Technological advances are quite astounding and uplifting. Many gifts and influences from outside this planet have been hushed up. Some information has, of course, been given to the planet in many different ways, and the resulting technologies have brought about great changes in lifestyle. One of the changes in lifestyle that occurred during this century was the introduction of movies. A whole new way of influencing thought was brought to the planet by the film industry. Just as there is a movie industry on this planet, there are those in space who have a holographic industry. They make holographic inserts, dramas that look just like they are real, and insert them through portals into your reality. Since these space beings have been around for hundreds of thousands of years, and humanity's frequencies have been controlled, it is quite easy to hoodwink human beings. Holographic inserts have energy fields and can be doused. Dowsing rods move differently in them because their energy fields are diverse and vibrate at an incredible rate. You can walk into them and participate in them. People may be part of them and swear they are real, but they are orchestrated events designed to influence the minds of humans. Holographic inserts are not done for information. They are done for control. They are simply an aspect of technology that exists. 
Humanity has been blind and hoodwinked over and over again because of the unevolved helixes that information could not plug into. The family of light has come to change all of that. You are here to carry a new frequency on the planet and hold it in your bodies so the rest of the planet can begin to vibrate at the same frequency. That frequency is going to create disruption of the structures based on two-stranded DNA on this planet. It cannot help it. It is time to evolve. Earth is ready to go through whatever is necessary for that evolution. Human beings must learn to read energies. They must learn to use more than the senses of their eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and so on to perceive reality. We have said that the eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and sense of touch are deceivers of reality. They lock reality in. Now you are going to need to rely on other forms of sensing to determine experience. One of the forms you have discounted is feeling. Feeling, your knowing, intuitive, psychic self, has been jammed by frequency control on this planet so that none of you have been able to find it. You are in charge of you, and it has been gifted and granted to you that you honor your light, your body, and your experience to the best of your ability. You, as members of the Family of Light, are intending to merge dimensions. Your task is to pull other dimensions into this reality, to have your nervous system handle the different molecular fluctuations, and to be able to make it okay. You are learning to perceive through your feeling centers and to teach others how to do all that you can do. You are the way showers. We have encouraged many of you to move out of the logical mind because the logical mind will come into conflict with this information. In the next number of years, your understanding and vibration with the frequencies coming to you will be like turning on your own radio. You will have a direct telepathic link with motherships broadcasting to you. There will come a time when you will never even think of going to a channeling session because you will have your own link up with information. The wealth of information that will come to you will be of great reassurance. It will be broadcast to fill you in on what is happening. As you become more trusting, you will be able to manifest before you a light entity who will come physically and begin to teach you. Channeling or the process of bringing information through another being will become completely archaic as each of you manifests your own literal being to teach you. In the meantime, we are here to teach you, to remind you of who you are and to give you an idea of what you can draw to yourself. What we want more than anything else is to assist you as members of the Family of Light to succeed in liberating the humans. Focus on the dance of yourself. To what tune will you dance and to what magic will you perform and to what heights will you be willing to push consciousness to give it a new definition of possibilities? The bringers of the dawn are those who carry the rays of the sun and bring light and knowledge. They have an ancient organization, an ancient society, an ancient spiritual bonding that keeps them doing certain work within a certain star system. The members of this elite organization come to Earth at different times to do their work. This occurs when a cycle has been set and events are perfect for them to allow the energy from the high cosmos and the energy from Earth to merge within their own beings. The energies from the cosmos are always coming to Earth and the energies from Earth are always lifting up towards the cosmos. 
humanity creates the sacred bridge between earth and sky, which some have called the rainbow bridge. The bringers of the dawn allow these energies to merge so that the dawn, or the light, is awakened within them. They then bring that dawn to civilizations. This is who you are. This is what you are doing. So are multitudes of others. You are the bringers of the dawn. You, the bringers of the dawn, also known as the family of light, agreed to go through the process of mutation to evolve yourselves into higher beings by intention and conscious agreement. Members of the bringers of the dawn or family of light work in teams. You don't go into systems alone. You need each other to do this work because you cannot hold the frequency by yourself. By going in as teams, you increase the odds of successfully carrying out the plan. You are like rays and light spirals of the central sun that are very intelligent, and you are guided by a great intelligence inside the central sun. The members of the family of light are much more than human. Characteristically, you are supreme achievers in the multidimensional realm. One applies for a position in the multidimensional realm as a member of the family of light. If you were to have a business card printed up for yourselves when you are in full memory of your identity, it would say something like, Renegade member of family of light, systems buster, available for altering systems of consciousness within the free will universe, on call. You are renegades of light, and you decide to come back and stage another raid of consciousness, millions of you at this time, because you knew in working with Prime Creator's energy that there was a high probability that everyone would achieve a great richness of consciousness. As you begin to pull this light into your bodies and onto the planet, many people who like drama may be affected. They may be pierced by light and have a reaction, because the more light you bring, the faster it will spread. Light is definitely growing on the planet as you remember that you are the native species working closely with the original planners here to take back your world from the raiders. In order to survive in the times that are coming, it is imperative to move into the idea of thought manifestation or superconsciousness. There are those who are very aware that this movement of consciousness could begin to sweep the planet and they are banking on it not occurring. It has already occurred. We have come back into your past to assure you of this. Thought comes first. Experience is always secondary. It is never the other way around, that you have the experience and then you base the thought around it. Always your experience is a direct reflection of what you are thinking. Clarity and recognition of your own power are the bottom line. Your thoughts form your world all of the time. Because you are bombarded with so many frequency control vibrations that attempt to keep you from being clear, you fluctuate. You must, as a species, make it your intention to stay very clear, to stay centered, and always to bring yourself into the moment. Stop living in the future or living in the past and always live in your now. Say to yourself, what do I want? I want to accelerate my personal evolution. I want spirit to assist me in a greater capacity. I want my body to regenerate itself. I want to emanate health. I am willing to give up difficulty so that I can be a living example of what humanity can be. It is this line of thinking, this commanding from your being and calling out what you want with clarity that brings you everything in acceleration. Do not be afraid of what you create. Trust what you create. Trust 
that there is always something in it for you. Do not sweep your dramas under the rug as if they are old, dirty, horrible things and you never wish to see them again. Get finished with these dramas. Stop cycling in them and being lost in them. However, understand that the drama you have had with your mother, your brother, your sister, your lover is something you may use 20 years later to come to a whole new realization. So let these life dramas be like a file for you. Finish them up, resolve them as best you can, create peace, accept your part in them, and then let them cycle back through your consciousness to teach you something. Those who are involved in dramas in which it looks like someone is a victim are usually so out of touch with their feelings that they do not connect how they feel with what they are thinking. Victims find victims. Victors find victors. You are a result of your thoughts. If there is nothing else you learn on this planet, you will learn that this is the rule in this reality and of many other realities. Your words are either empowering or disempowering. We want you to have the courage to live your light. So we want to emphasize to you and convince you in whatever way possible that your thoughts formulate your world. Eliminate the words should and trying from your vocabulary. Should implies that you are operating under someone else's sovereignty. We would like to remind you that you are sovereign unto yourself. If someone is trying to put out a newsletter or trying to change their patterns, they can try for the rest of their life. Trying is not doing. Whenever you use the word trying, you will not accomplish anything because trying is an excuse. I tried to do it. I tried. I tried. In your own life, use the words, I am creating. I am doing. I am manifesting. I am intending. And I am bringing about. Forget I am trying. State of mind is the name of the game here. We cannot emphasize that to you enough. How you feel about reality and how you program reality is how you are going to respond to it or how it is going to present itself to you. Remember, when you learn the rules of the game, that you are a result of thought and that this is a law within your universe, all you need do is think of how you want to be and so you shall be. Once you figure this out, you can design your body, you can design your age, you can fix everything about yourself because you will be self-motivated, self-empowered, and self-generated. It is time for all of you to redefine your own identities in a much greater sense. Events are transpiring in the cosmos that you and even many of your political leaders have no idea of. You must stop this foolishness about your definitions of gods, thinking that there are beings who come from the skies to this planet with special talents and abilities and that they are all spiritually connected. You are going to discover as a species some very disturbing ideas over the next number of years. We are preparing you by decree of the family of light so that you can understand and be informed about your own options. Reach out with your feeling center and feel the confusion that is spreading around this world about what is going on. This planet has operated on a very low frequency, a frequency based on survival and a frequency based on disempowerment. Your identity has been based on what you could gather outside of yourself. The 12 helixes will render irrelevant everything that has represented and surrounded the two helixes. All of the money saved and property owned, all of the security based on the first two helixes that provides you with identity 
is completely irrelevant to the evolution of the planet. This planet is in desperate need of committed entities who are in search of the exalted self. The continuity we have been speaking of that it will behoove you to bring into your lives involves knowing from moment to moment inside your beings that you are committed to discovering this exaltation. This exaltation can be translated in words as a frequency or a wave of feeling or vibration. You all understand vibration in terms of light and sound. Vibrations are ongoing. They carry and transmit forms of intelligence. When you look to yourself and do not forget that you are on this path and you continuously remind yourself that you are pulling light into your body and are seeking to raise the frequency of your physical being, defy the laws of humanity and alter the frequency of the planet, you are producing a kind of continuity that can do more than all the books and tapes in the world. Wherever you are, use the pillar of light. We recommend that each of you visualize a pillar of light coming in through the top of your head, opening your crown and filling your body with light. Picture this cosmic pillar of light coming from the higher cosmos, filling you and then coming out to a solar plexus and making a ball of light around your body so that you exist within a glowing etheric egg. When you love yourself and Earth and you know that you are here to redefine, redesign and break the boundaries of humanity, you broadcast this. You live your life committed to this. If you ask us how much time you need to devote to this, we will say it is very simple, all of your time. You each came to this planet to do a task, and that task is at hand. It is now. The decade of change is upon you, and as you integrate and realize what this change means, it will alter each and every one of your lives. The change means giving up many things, coming apart from many things, and coming together with other things because you will trust. What does it mean to trust? It means to have such inner knowing that your thoughts create your world, to simply be quite certain with divine nonchalance and inner knowing that if you think of something, it is. It is this theme over and over again that we are attempting to present to you in every capacity and every means of expression so that one of these days you will get it. Once you get it and begin to live it, you will begin to change your lives. You have purpose because all aspects of consciousness are connected to one another. None exist outside the system. They are all parts of the whole. The essence of the vehicle you occupy and the energy you generate are part of the developmental sequence that you can say has a purpose for your personal search in life. We speak to you as if you are not human because to us, you are not. To us, you are members of the family of light and we know your multidimensional selves. We speak to you about dealing with humans because it is your assignment to integrate with them, soothe them and awaken a spark of light within them so that they are not all destroyed and so that this place can house a new species and a new realm of activity. There is an order that you operate within that part of yourself cannot see. Sometimes when part of yourself is operating without vision or seeing, events occur to get you back on track. Be aware that in this new chaos of consciousness and confusion and shifting of uncertainty, there is a divine order. What can we say to convince you to take all of the boundaries down, to stop limiting what you believe can be yours? If there is anything we wish to achieve, it is to have each of you boundless and free, 
knowing that every thought you entertain somehow determines your experience. If we could get you to live 100% of the time according to what you want, we would feel that this has been a most successful year. We are going to ask each of you to make that commitment and to live a cleaner and more impeccable life. We ask you to accept responsibility in areas that you have not even thought of accepting responsibility. We want you each to act as if you know what's going on. Act as if you are divinely guided in every choice you make and begin to believe that you are always at the right place at the right time. Say to yourself, I am in divine guidance. I am always at the right place at the right time. Everything I do is orchestrated for my higher growth, for my higher consciousness, and my higher evolution. Be living keepers of frequency. When light is brought into your body, it fires your light encoded filaments and helps rebundle the DNA, creating a frequency change. Frequency is what you know. Frequency is your identity. When your own life rises to a position where you do not even recognize it as your life, you allow the energy of the non-physical realms to use you as a conduit, to merge the dimensions and liberate consciousness into a new way of perceiving. Even though there is death and destruction coming to your world, Remember that death and destruction come in the autumn every year on this planet. The flowers and leaves on the trees are killed by the frost. Things wither and die. Perhaps someone who lives where it is always summer would be very disturbed when they saw autumn for the first time. They would think, goodness, the world is being destroyed here. All the beauty is being taken away. Understand that this is what is going on with Earth. It is a season when some things will die so that many new things can be born. It is all part of the divine plan. Even though human beings are not consciously aware of it, you know in the deepest portion of your beings that you move from one existence to another and gather experience so that your soul can understand and process data to give you a view of one reality. Someday, you will be able to scan the lives and existences of your soul and hold the energy of that soul just like you would hold a crystal, look at the different facets and sparkles within it and feel and know that identity. When you are able to do this with your soul, your soul will be able to connect with other forms of intelligence that it is a part of but does not presently comprehend. We are stretching you. We want you to become completely confused so that you will be energized. Then you will utilize your curiosity to take you into areas that not only have you never thought of, you never even knew existed. This is our intention, that you come to a higher ground where you can create a new order of identity, courageously, with humor, and with confidence. All things are frequencies. If you knew how rapidly you are evolving, you might want to sit in a chair and put your hand over your head and say, I can't do it. There is too much going on for me. You keep the veil pulled down and pretend to go about life as if nothing is happening when you are continuously being upgraded with all kinds of changes to bring you closer to the higher dimensions. Think about and feel what you are going to achieve in one lifetime. Within the next 10 to 20 years, you will move from being dense physical creatures into creatures of light in the age of light. Can you conceive of this? Everything that you are doing is bringing you in a divinely perfect way to that place. At some point, 
you will understand the importance of every event in which you are participating and the integrity of the whole. At times, you will recognize that the energy has become too much and that you are not calm and centered. This will occur for each and every one of you at some point. In some way, you will feel as if too much is happening. There will be too much data to compute, too many people to talk to, or too much going on. At those times, what you need to do more than anything else is rest. Some of you will need a tremendous amount of sleep at different points. There will be times when some of you will wish to sleep 18 hours. Do it. It is necessary. You have no idea of the lands you travel to and the work done on your physical body when you sleep. It is the time when you are unplugged from this reality and recharged and taught in other realities. The bridges and your eyes will open between realities and you will begin to see and carry these memories. Remember, Earth was sealed off eons ago. Earth was created to be one thing and then completely got off track after millions of years of existence. Many of you incarnated here over and over again and got really frustrated because every time you incarnated you had an intention of doing something but half the time you forgot what it was. Some of you were able to achieve mastery upon this planet and get yourselves off it through the ascension process. Others of you clamored that you wanted a time when this quarantine or seclusion from the rest of cosmic society would come to an end. Because of you and the multitudes that are on this planet and surrounding this planet, the present time period was born. Assistance comes to you in all avenues of life, yet others cannot do things for you because you designed life in such a way that this species must self-motivate and evolve in order to be empowered. Those of you who are tremendously knowledgeable decided to incarnate in this species to empower it by being an example for the rest who cannot do it for themselves. You make new pathways of being as you broadcast who you are. When you gather in rooms for channelings, you ask for a tremendous number of reminders and a tremendous amount of encouragement along the way. Some of you are finding that you cannot make it without the encouragement. This is understood. It is why we are here, most of the time, with tremendous patience for you. We wish to give you the opportunity to claim who you are. The avatars and masters have now permeated the grid work of the world, bringing with them their own tools for teaching. You are implanted with a structure, a geometric form, which triggers certain information within you. No one is implanted who does not choose it. This structure of the language of light is a way of receiving information and energy to facilitate your development. It involves opening to the belief that there is indeed a hierarchy immense beyond your comprehension that has been working with humanity since the very beginning. The forms that are implanted come in a variety of shapes such as the pyramid structure. On this planet and throughout the cosmos, the pyramid structure is utilized to represent a great unity of consciousness. The structures of the sphere and the spiral will also be implanted inside you. There will also be implanted the structures of the parallel lines and the cube. And, of course, there will be the structure of the Merkaba vehicle, which is the five-sided figure. The five-sided figure represents the figure of the human being in its most unlimited state, the totally free human. Which implant or geometric form will be implanted inside you will depend, first of all, on your request for alignment. It will also depend on your belief that these entities choose to be available to you if you choose to be available for them. 
as you begin to unfold and allow what are called miracles or magnificent events to manifest in your life, they will begin. Those of you who are willing to believe that there are truly no limitations will be able to take the Merkaba structure and move yourself off the planet with it while you are still living on the planet. The desire to do this must exist in you if you are to be implanted with the Merkaba. Already some of you have attempted to travel with it and you know how it can be used in your being. When you truly call the Merkaba to yourself and you are willing to get the feeling of what that truly means to be unlimited consciousness that travels within your body and without your body leaving the planet, that is when implanting will occur. The spiral is one of the basic forms of the language of light geometry. It is a bridge, a teaching unto itself. The form of it is coated with information, and when you ride the spiral, it is seemingly non-ending. This shows you that the journey into yourself is non-ending, and that the journey outside of yourself is non-ending. The spiral exists in many dimensions. When you visualize the spiral, you will feel that you have known it, yet at first you are only knowing one aspect of it. Your DNA is in the form of a spiral. These language of light geometrical shapes and forms are collections of experiences of individuals who have incarnated on this planet, defied the human laws, awakened themselves to high abilities, and then manifested themselves as language and geometric components. Once these energies existed as men and women on this planet, they have evolved themselves into geometric symbols and they exist in their sphere of activity just like you exist in your body. These entities exist in a language system or a geometric system. This language is being introduced onto the planet as a story, a glyph of information that holds a frequency to assist you in holding your own frequency. As you awaken, it is easy for others to read you and recognize you. You are monitored all of the time because there are devices that monitor the evolution and location of consciousness. Once consciousness has reached a certain place, assistance is brought from the outside to establish other realms of that frequency. Light informs you. It uplifts you because once you are informed, you feel more powerful. When you are not informed, you feel powerless. Sound is another way to carry information because it is part of light. To you it may seem that sound and light are two separate things because from your point of view you perceive light with your eyes and sound with your ears. Because you use two separate areas of perception on your body, it seems that sound and light are separated as well. In actuality, they are very connected. They wind themselves around one another because they both carry information. Sound is a tool for transformation. Keepers of frequency, which is what we are encouraging you to become, learn how to modulate the frequency they hold through sound. Sound can penetrate any substance, move molecules, and rearrange realities. You can begin to work with sound by allowing it to play your body. Get yourself centered clear your mind and allow tones to come through you. The ancient mystery schools worked with sound in this manner and it is a very powerful technique when done in a group. You will go very far with your use of sound after working with it for a while. It is like a powerful tool being given to an infant. Without proper awareness, you could do things 
and not realize the ramifications of what you are doing. Think about what sound does in stadiums and auditoriums. The cheering or booing of a crowd creates an ambiance. When groups of you make sound together, you create an ambiance for yourselves. You allow certain energies to play the instrument of your bodies. You let go of preconceived ideas and allow different melodies and energies to use your physical bodies as opportunities to represent themselves on the planet. In actuality, what you experience is the life force of energies that you allow to express through your own selves. You become channels. Just as our vehicle allows us to come into your reality through her body, you allow a vibration to come onto the planet in its full glory through your bodies and your joint cooperation. You birth something. You create an opportunity and an energy takes advantage of that opportunity. Sound is going to evolve. Now human beings can become the instruments for sound through toning. Certain combinations of sounds played through the human body unlock information and frequencies of intelligence. Being silent for a long period after the harmonics allows human beings to use their bodies as devices to receive and absorb the frequencies and to use the vehicle of breathing to take them into an ecstatic state. When you tone with others, you have access to the group mind that you did not have prior to making the sound. The key word is harmony. What you intend to do with sound is of the utmost importance. If you are not clear about your intentions, sound can have a way of enveloping upon itself and growing beyond its original capacity. It doubles and quadruples itself with its own impact. It is very important for you to have a clear intention of what you plan on doing with the sound. Sound stirs energy up. It creates a standing columnar wave, building frequency upon frequency. This energy can then be directed at or toward anything. When you make sounds in a circle or in the circumference of the pillar of light, you create a column that is capable of doing many more things than you ever realized. It is capable of creating explosions and of destroying and creating many realities. The planet is looking for a balance in the self. Since the self is a composite of all things, it is a harmonic that balances all of your extraterrestrial selves, multidimensional selves, and male and female selves. As you excess multidimensionality, you must merge male and female. You will not stop at the separation or fight between men and women that has been going on for thousands of years. Who is creating the separation between men and women? It is the Creator Gods who have set up this paradigm for you and instigated these frequencies from other points of view. The separation story has served them well because of the havoc it has created. The male vibrations came into power in recent times, some 5,000 years ago. In order to slowly recognize who they were, they completely and totally disassociated themselves from anything that was formerly in power, the matriarchal movement and females. Females operate traditionally through the realms of intuition and feeling. Males have also been carriers of intuition and feeling a multitude of times. But in this recent separation, they did not carry feelings with them. There was a huge schism, and the males and females on the planet came into great conflict. Why did this occur? It was a setup. It was set up by the Creator Gods, who took over the planet and raided the reality 
feeding, keeping themselves alive and functioning, and nourishing themselves off emotional turmoil. Remove yourselves from your personal drama and realize that it is all symbolic. You don't need to take what you are doing personally or carry it as a personal burden as if it is just yours. It is not just yours. It is universal. As members of the family of light, you have come here to transmute for the species. As soon as you get less attached to the dramas, you will not feel so caught up and victimized by them. You will understand that this is a collective of energy you are dealing with. So collectively, if you can come to the realization inside yourselves, you can broadcast a new vibration for women and men to harmonize with. All of this is now coming to a point of stabilization or equalization. The female began to open her throat about 30 years ago, making the opportunity to speak fashionable. The problem is that many females ended up shutting down their feeling centers as they opened their speech centers. They began to become very much like males. A balance is needed. Now the female is finding the need to awaken the feminine principle inside herself. She is in a female body and has mastered the use of the male vibration within herself. She has gone out into the world and she feels powerful. She can walk the streets without a veil on her face and she can decide whether she wants to be married. She is her own property. She is responsible in this country for her own decisions. She is beginning to soften and to awaken the portion of herself that nurtures her and brings her life. As she makes herself whole with her male and female portions and allows herself to experience the evolved DNA, she broadcasts this frequency. This frequency will become very prevalent upon the planet. It is inevitable that men will open their feeling centers. That is the next step men must go through to establish a balance with the female. This will happen very quickly for men. It will not be a 30-year process because men at this time are moving as a populace into confusion. Men are realizing that they don't like what is occurring and they are questioning authority. You do not have a pantheon of powerful female creator images. You have nothing on which to pattern a positive image of the empowered feminine. So men are striving to be male and women are striving to be empowered through a male vibration because you do not have a clear vision of the empowered female. You must create it. Begin to recognize the wealth of energy in the female version of self, which is intuition, receptivity, creativity, compassion, and nourishment. You are discovering that there is a wealth of identity in an essence that has been discredited for a long time. If you are female, of course, you are a living form of that essence. Men must discover their form of the goddess within themselves where the goddess meets the god in them. By the same token, the view of the masculine is distorted. You do not have an example of an empowered feeling male. Society has deemed feeling male soft and lacking in masculinity. Men are beginning to look at their emotions and say, Hey, I feel this and know that they are still men. So men and women are both creating role models for empowered, integrated versions of masculine and feminine. These models are coming, and they are coming quickly. The time for separation is finished. As all of you are on the path of integrating the polarities within yourselves, difficult issues are going to come up over and over again. Welcome the difficult times, 
for they can be your greatest teacher. Stay focused on your own growth, your own path, and your own self, and not on what others are doing. Call on your own internal masculine and feminine and set up a dialogue between them so that they can begin to work in partnership and harmony. Give yourself a lot of love and encouragement. Make an appointment with yourself and say, I love you, self. You are a wonderful self. You are A number one, the best self. You are here to master a very difficult task in a system that is dark and gives very little input, stimulation, or information about the true story. You are here to do the impossible. By committing to love yourself and making this commitment the number one step from which you operate every day, everything falls into place. You become whole and complete. Then, you are ready for a bonded relationship with another who is complete, and that relationship can take you into unexplored realms. When the library of yourselves was torn from the shelves and scattered, and the DNA was split so that there were only two strands left with very little data and very little memory, sexuality was left intact in the physical body. It was left as a form of reproduction, of course, as a form for the species to stay in touch with its own essence and bring itself into life. Very deep inside the mechanism of sexuality is a frequency that can be attained that has been sought after and misunderstood by many people. It is called orgasm. Sexuality connects you with the frequency of ecstasy, which connects you back to your divine source and to information. The discovery of the highest frequency of sexuality arises from the love experience. It has nothing to do with relationships being either homosexual or heterosexual. It has to do with two human beings bringing pleasure to one another in a way that opens frequencies of consciousness. Love is the essence that is to be created in all relationships. If you love and honor someone, it doesn't matter what your composition of density is. What matters is the love vibration and how you explore this love, which ideally is gifted and coupled with the integration of the male and female counterparts that make the twin flame. Ideally, sexuality is explored through feelings. The third and fourth chakras connect you to the emotional and compassionate selves, which connect you to the spiritual self. The spiritual self is the part of yourself that is multidimensional, through which you exist in many forms simultaneously. It is your assignment and agreement and task to be aware of all of these realities in the identity that you are. When you are aware, you can tune into the different frequencies, remember who you are, and change the vibratory rate of this universe. Before DNA was rearranged, the way many people reached the higher realms and were able to climb the ladders of themselves and reach into off-planet frequencies was by electromagnetically bonding through love. They created a rocket ship-like experience to propel them out into other systems of reality. This has been one of the best kept secrets upon the planet. You were left with the frequency of the orgasmic experience in sexuality so that you could remember your higher identity. When this energy or history of yourself is revealed and you discover who you are, you will unite many bodies of your personal multidimensional identity in your physical form. To receive the full impact of the grid work of your identity, let the 12 helixes fit in your body and allow the light-encoded filaments to rearrange themselves. 
sexuality can be very confusing at this time because you are raising and studying your frequencies. When you join bodies, even when you hug one another, you exchange frequency. When you are having a sexual experience, there is a hormonal release inside the body. The hormones awaken certain energies inside the cells and there is a transference of one person's essence into the other person. That is why when you have had sexual experiences with someone, you sometimes cannot get their energy off you. Even though you don't want to be with the person, the sexual experience stays with you because you have had an electromagnetic exchange. If expressing yourself sexually encouraged your greatest growth, you would automatically create that experience for yourself because you would be ready for it. Understand that during the process of evolving the self, very often a period of dormancy in sexual activity occurs. Within the sexual frequency, you exchange with one another. So, if you are bonding yourself and chemically exchanging with a person who is not of your likeness, you are taking on their garbage because you are exchanging energy quite intimately. The population must clear the negative connotations and judgments that have colored your sexual experience for eons. You must make peace with sex in order to integrate the frequencies and identity. Things have been manipulated and given a boundary of limitation so that the truth of sexuality has been kept from you. You have been told that you can procreate with it and have orgasms, but you have not been told that you can open frequencies with it. You can come into contact and use it as a method of remembering who you are and altering the vibrational frequency of your body. In the next few years, your expression of sexuality will have a whole new dimension. You will evolve and grow, provided that you have a partner who is willing to take the same route and be that open. From our point of view, you all have knowledge, and you just need to activate the memory that is stored inside your being. We've noticed that some of you from your location of experience are out there moaning and groaning saying we need help and assistance now and again so let us suggest to you an avenue that you can definitely walk down a formula that works the formula is quite simple it is for you in the moment and every day to consistently set out with clarity what you wish to experience Perhaps what you want falls into a category of impossibility according to someone else's boundary or someone else's limitation. With a sense of deserving and graciousness, discover inside yourself what will bring you happiness, what makes you feel light and connected and alive. What do you desire that will bring peace on the planet as you occupy your own being? Whatever those things are, begin to want them. Call them to yourself by saying, It is my intention that I experience a harmonious lifestyle. It is my intention to experience health and energy that lead me to creative adventures. It is my intention that I be well provided for, that shelter and food and all of the things I need to experience life be given to me in great abundance and that I pass this great abundance on and share it with others. These are not ideas you have been trained to think of. Two or three times a day, devote a small portion of your time to getting clear about what you want. Every day, Open the energy centers in your body and above your body by calling the frequency of light. We call this the pillar of light. Picture a beam of light coming into your 12 chakra centers, seven inside your body and five outside your body. These chakras are information centers or vortexes that once activated begin to spin. When they spin, 
They create a movement inside your body that activates the light encoded filaments to work together, rebundle, and form the 12 evolving helixes in the body. It is very important for everyone who wishes to be in complete balance with their physical being to practice on a regular basis some kind of deep breathing program. This is a program in which breath is very important and oxygenation is practiced so that oxygen is brought into the body. Another activity we recommend for those of you who wish to move into a vast acceleration of energy is spinning. Move from left to right, spinning round and focusing your vision on your thumb, counting and spinning. We recommend that you spin 33 times at least once a day. You may build up to 33 spins very slowly. If you are able to work up to 33 spins three times a day so that you are spinning 99 times, well, we will see how long you will stay on the planet or at least in this dimension. When you complete spinning, however many times you spin, Bring your palms together at chest level. Press them together, keeping your eyes open, and balance yourself with your feet at shoulders width apart so that you can feel anchored and still feel the spinning at the same time. This tremendously accelerates the spinning of the chakra systems inside your body, which tremendously accelerates the rate at which you can interpret and receive data. As you are electronic beings who are altering your frequency at a very fast rate, we would recommend that you drink a tremendous amount of water. Fresh water, purified water, or spring water. Water acts as a conduit or conductor. It keeps your system open and flowing. There are many other things you can do. Learn to have altered state experiences and not feel out of control. Cultivate them and go into them to gather information, change probabilities, move on to the corridor of time, and alter your own lives. Then come out of them with complete and total use of your will with respect to how you use these altered states. When you learn to do this, the acceleration will be absolutely phenomenal. When there are many consciousnesses on the planet registering that kind of ability, the whole network that organizes and monitors human consciousness alters itself. More energy is able to come onto the planet because there are those who can accommodate it. Everyone can learn to accommodate and honor this energy because it must be housed. It is like an oil well. What good do oil wells do if they are untapped and shooting off here, there, and everywhere? Very little. They just create a mess. However, when you take energy gifts from Earth, such as oil wells or sources of natural gas or waterfalls, and you combine them with your will, you put together a purpose or a way of directing the energy. Then, a wealth occurs for those of you who direct these natural resources. The most essential aspect of this entire process of directing and housing energies is to value Earth and her experience first and foremost. You are being given an incredible natural resource at this time, and you must tap it and direct it then you will all become very wealthy individuals in the realms of accessibility and mastery. Many of you want to reach the higher realms and stay there, forgetting that your task is here on Earth. You must learn to stay grounded. The necessity of being grounded is something many of you do not understand. You will soon find out that if you move into greater and greater acceleration, and you do not have grounds, things to connect you and pull the world into one, you may have difficulty with your nervous systems. When frequency changes and more light comes into the body, 
the typical vehicle begins to receive much more data. Sometimes you get very bored living in your world and you just want to come into data receptivity and forget about what you consider the mundane world. If you are not grounded, you will not have a way of allowing that information to enter your reality and be put to use. It could simply overload your system or you could not be able to translate what you are getting and stay calm. You need to balance many worlds at once. How do you do this? By intention, by practice, and by decree. Grounding allows worlds to merge and allows you to access many worlds. It allows you to feel surges of energy and then to direct these surges of energy where and when you need them to become superhuman. A good way to ground yourself is to go outside and sit on the ground. So go outside and be in nature. Stand or sit next to a tree for a while. Put your chair in the sun and read a book with the sun shining on you. Or go swimming or put your feet in water. These are the elements. They make up earth so you can feel them. You must learn to handle many realities at once, to realize that you are doing this, and to have a place, Earth, to translate information into. You would not be here if it wasn't important for you to ground information and energy into Earth. So, whenever you find yourself electrified or energized, realize you are in an altered state. Realize also how many versions of altered states there are and that you must instruct yourself to become a conduit like a big pipeline. When you know you are in an altered state and are being given information, healing energy, exaltation or upliftment, act as a pipeline. Funnel the energy through yourself and acknowledge and recognize that you are in a multi-dimensional expression. Register this, but do not analyze it. Just let the energy filter through you into Earth, and it will make more sense later on. You can discover your emotional body by making a decree that you believe emotions can be trusted. Decree that you believe emotions are good that they are safe, that they can take you somewhere, that they are beneficial, and that they are not just in the way or misunderstood. Anytime emotions are released in you, look to see what they do for you. When you have a fight with your child, or your child screams at you, and then afterwards you feel bad and cry, look at your emotion. What is the emotion doing for you? Whenever you are in emotion, you are accessing information from many realities. Find that frequency and hold it. It is somewhat of a universal belief that emotions are uncontrollable. They are not. You can control emotion, and you do not have to go out of control. Emotion can become a frequency inside of you through which you feel to the depth and core of your being. Yet someone may look at you and not have any idea that anything is going on with you. This does not mean you are blocking. It simply means you have set up a way to feel an emotion and not feel bad about it or good about it, but just recognize you are feeling it. See what else you can do with an emotion. Where does it take you? What is the next step? Disengage from the event that brought about the emotion. That will help some of you. Body work serves to bring about a release. You have used the tissue and muscle of your body as armor to cover up your skeleton. This tissue has compacted and buried itself and kept what is in the skeletal form from rising to the surface. You want to access information that is within bone, for bone is where the story is held, 
while the blocks are held in tissue. You must go through all these layers to get to the truth inside your body. Remember that all things exist as a vibration. Animals were put upon the planet to be companions for you, to live on the land and to feed you and shelter you if necessary. This was to be done with love. If you live on a farm and raise your own chickens and pigs, and if you feed them food, and if, when it comes time to bring them to slaughter, you do it with compassion and love, then it is fine. You give quality of life to the animals, and then the animals in turn recycle themselves to give you love and quality of life. That is the ideal. That was the reality for a long time upon this planet. It is not the reality any longer. Be aware of the vibration within things. Let your body speak what it wants. Let yourself be willing to change because your body, as it attempts to raise its vibration and build a light body, will move away from certain foods. Intend that you wish to change your diet and then intend that things come to you. We emphasize over and over again that you are much more than physical beings. You exist in many realities and you have a multitude of guides. So each of you needs to become more clear in your intentions. What do you want? State, I want to evolve. I want to change my diet. I wish to have a greater sense of intuition. Be clear about what you intend. The words, I intend, have tremendous power. True health would consist of 12 completely mutated and evolved helixes inside the body, which would activate full brain capacity. It will take a while for the 12 helixes to be completely activated, though they can begin to be plugged in. Some of you have experienced them as plugged in, yet not activated. When they are in activation, the full brain is in operation and you are geniuses. You know everything. You are telepathic and you are able to do anything because you are the host of the living library. You have the card that allows you to access any kind of information stored all over this planet. If you could aspire to anything, we would ask you to become impeccable keepers of frequency. Keep inside yourself knowledge and information of the highest order, an order of unlimited being. Make that frequency, simply by living it, available to all around you by walking your streets, shopping in your stores, and simply resting on your pillows in the evening and knowing who you are. There will come a time when you will no longer need to seek information outside of yourself. At this time, we and others like us come to trigger you, to round you up, to gather you together, and to put you into clusters so that you can reflect off each other and electromagnetically charge each other. When we work with you, we create sparks of light that allow openings. As these openings occur within you, you vibrate at such a rate that you affect everyone around you. Whenever something clicks with one of you, you send out a frequency of recognition and other people pick it up. This is how the group mind grows. It occurs without you rationally understanding it or specifically having a picture or a realization of it because it happens electromagnetically within the body. You create the raising of the energy according to how much you are able to handle. We want you to be able to go to the edge of a cliff, step off it, and stand in the air next to the edge of the cliff. We want you to be out there. 
We want you to recognize the heretic inside of you, the part that knows and is going to break this reality wide open and establish a whole new paradigm of consciousness. This is not going to be done by one world leader. It is going to be done by the masses because the masses are ready for it. At this time, the guardians of light are on this planet in the millions. All you need to do is evolve yourself. Your work at this time is very intensely involved with the self, the physical vehicle that you presently occupy. It is the self that allows you to play this game at this time. Love it, honor it, cherish it, take good care of it, speak very well of it, and intend that it perform at optimum capacity. That is all you need to do to be open to connect with your family of light. Then be prepared to find out who light has met, who light is going to introduce you to, and who light indeed are. Love is what you experience when you go beyond light. You need light, which is information, to access this love. Without the informational frequency, the love frequency is misunderstood. When the love frequency comes first, without the light frequency, you think that love is outside of yourself rather than understanding that it is you. Then you do what people on the planet have done for eons. You worship and deify everything and think that love is out there rather than in here. We have decided to come onto this planet and operate with light first by informing you, strengthening you, and firing your blueprints according to information. Now that you have become informed and you understand what you are up against during the multidimensional light infusion with your identity, you will begin to experience the love frequency that will allow you to extend love to other versions of your multidimensional self and create a massive healing of consciousness on many levels. The experiences you will have in these realms of activity can be very powerful. They will alter you tremendously and you will walk around with a smile from ear to ear so that others will wonder what you have been up to. You will carry yourself this way because you will be in a vibration of ecstasy. You will be in a vibration of connectedness and everyone and everything you draw to yourself will be a part of that vibration. Anything that does not resonate with this frequency will not even be able to get near you. In actuality, when you resonate with the higher frequencies, anything that is not in those frequencies will not even see you. When you operate in the frequency of information, coupled with creation and love, you will be put to work spreading that frequency, not by doing it for others, but by allowing others to feel your frequency when they come in contact with you. You are all invaluable, you know. Those of you who master these things, and there is no reason why all of you cannot, will be in a very high demand one of these days. You will be looked upon as superhuman. However, it is not for you to separate yourself from the population. It is your place to teach the population and show them how they can do the same thing. Frequencies are to be given and shared freely so that everyone can discover what they can do for themselves. This is how this planet is going to evolve. Awareness is awakening within the masses on this planet. The sum total of events as they quicken and unfold is seeping its way into everyone's reality. These events are orchestrated and designed to bring you collectively as a species to this new octave of light expression. This infusion from the galactic tidal wave of light comes from the future 
through portals you open on this earth plane as you follow and weave yourself through the journey and story we have shared with you. The masses are awakening. You see them around you and you feel the rumblings of consciousness, the internal earth changes, which will truly mark the rites of passage for all of humanity. We have, with the greatest assistance from our teachers, presented to this planet information that we feel can harmonize our purposes and pool our energies. We feel that we have given to this planet at this time a succinct message of inspiration, a message that holds waves of truth. It is a message to tickle, a message to entice and call forward that part of the self that has been hidden away and lying dormant. We feel that the material we have been sharing is to awaken within you what you know. It is to bring you to an understanding of the different versions of your reality's illusion as it has been sold to you and to an understanding of what your part in all of this is or can be. We have stimulated each and every one of you with our thought-provoking messages. It has been our intention to move each one of you and stir you from some place, not to make you uncomfortable. You may make yourselves uncomfortable. We encourage you to find comfort. We also encourage you to climb a few mountain ranges of consciousness within yourself. To go to new places of comfort and to find those valleys of eternal youth, eternal vitality, and ongoing expression of creativity. There you will find new vistas of consciousness and a galactic wave of light from the future. In this final message, we speak into the soul and heart of every one of you. We ask you to hear the call, to recognize it, and to step forward as a member of the family of light. Have the courage in all the days you walk this planet to live that light and share it with all you encounter. This does not mean to preach or sell that light. It means to live the light you know you are, to discover in the simplicity of your being the purpose of your existence, to blossom with it, and to reseed this place that is planet Earth in its deepest time of transition. The process of moving into this higher octave of understanding this blending of dimensions and creation of new territory will lead everyone through greater understanding of death. Your light will be needed. Your light represents what you know. It is time for you to share the discoveries and miracles of operating the physical vehicle in these times of change and transition that involve the death of the world as you know it. When there is a death, there is also a rebirth. Something dies and something new is born. As this planet moves closer to these days of great change, each of you will be called upon to stand as pillars of light. You will show the way in times when people are desperate because the old ways are no longer solutions. They no longer fit and no longer apply. We have intimated that light brings about much of this chaos on the planet. So, during these times, your gifts will be needed. You cannot run and hide because you are needed to weave through the communities and bring alternative ways of being. You are needed to share your belief in creating reality through your thoughts and to show others how this works by healing and creating new ideals of civilization and cooperation. As the days begin to unfold, 
they will reveal the ancient prophecies as they are coming alive. These ancient prophecies will be much more colorful and have their own versions of themselves as they teach this planet its greatest lessons. As you evolve, you carry what you know forward and you share it and live it. You become a greater vessel or greater expression of light. Through this process, you will find that over the next few years, you will be catapulted beyond the speed of light with what you know. The abilities and talents and information that will come to you are simply inside of you. The light body is the body that holds the complete mutation of the species. It will be able to juggle realities through the shifting of consciousness by intent from one view to another, like turning the stations on a television. The light body will hold all of this encoded data and be able to translate it at will. Remember, matter is simply light that is trapped. As you build your light body, you are allowing a reorganization of the molecular structure, a loosening of your grip upon a certain aspect of materialism so that your spiritual understanding can be more in tune with your day-to-day -day life. The building of the light body is the allowing of less trapped matter to manifest and allow light, which is freer in expression and in seeking its own source, to become who you are so that you are not so solid. As you raise your vibratory rates, you become your light body. You will see the change in your body literally. Your body will become more vital, more youthful, more nourished in its own being, and definitely the processor of a multitude of information. It will become a super being. The building of the light body involves becoming a super being. Extending the longevity of the cellular body through rejuvenation and extension of cellular life is coming back into fashion. This is part of building the light body a body that is not so dense, that does not self-destruct, that self-generates, and that self-replenishes. This is what you are all striving for. You would be your light body, and you would feel it if your logical mind were not so worried about whether it is possible. Society is not telling you it is possible. We cannot emphasize enough to you that you must stop listening to society. This is going to be the hardest task for you to do and the biggest break for you to make. You have the societal self and the spiritual self and you must decide which one is sacred. Which one is your source of authority? Let your intuitive self become your authority. Allow your intuitive self to be the standard bearer of your experience, which is experience no one else is going to validate. Your experience springs from the assignment that you are knowing and not necessarily remembering that you are on. If you approach all that you know with the stance that there is divine order and divine purpose, without your ego aspect comprehending it all the time, you will move rapidly through realities. There will be many different ways this galactic tidal wave of light will be experienced. Definitely, it will catapult everyone into some exaggerated version of their greatest opportunity. That, of course, is each person's choice. Our final words include a thank you to all of you who recognize the light source that is a part of your identity and that moves you to follow the silent whispers that echo down the golden spirals through the corridors of your own being. We honor you, we recognize you, and we are here to assist you. We are all here as the family of light 
to bring that choice and that freedom to evolve back onto this planet, to bring it to this place where it will shine as a portion of the living library, a new star, a new light on the horizons of many sentient worlds. We wait in the future for your past to intersect our present and catapult all of existence to a new octave, the highest octave of being. It is our great pleasure to have your assistance in this process.